Okay, as always, this is part of a series. Uh, there should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist. I recommend watching all the previous videos. We are going to start fresh with a script today. A lot of it's going to be review, but we're going to reorganize stuff, make things a little more um, organized. Yes. So be sure to watch the previous videos or you might be lost. Again, we're working with 3JS in HTML5, uh, 3JS.org. You can go down there, download the full package. There's plenty of examples and um, and documentation. So far we've been working with the main minimal uh, 3JS script. Today we're going to work with another script that comes within that package called trackball controls. I've already started to create a file. I've already downloaded the trackball control JS. It's in the same directory. Uh, also there will be a link in the description to this file as well as all the other files in the series uh, in the um, description below, but I recommend going to 3JS.org and getting the full package with all of the example files uh, and playing around with those as well. Um, I st already started creating a basic, basic uh, HTML file here. I've called it basic trackball controls.html. I'm going to go into that. So far, I've added uh, HTML tags, body tags, and I've imported the minimal uh, 3JS JavaScript, which is in my current directory. Now I am also going to import uh, the trackball, which is trackball controls.js. Again, I've put that in my current directory. Really, if you're working on a site, you probably would make a separate folder for all your JavaScript to keep things organized, but for these tutorials, I'm putting everything in the same folder, but it's all up to you on how you want to organize stuff. So I've imported that script. Now we're going to work on the main portion of our code. So we're going to create some script tags here. And uh, we'll create some variables here at the very beginning. We'll say var. We'll create a camera variable. And all these variables will define later on. They're going to be objects, but um, it's just nice to have these all listed at the top here. So our camera, our controls, which we're going to be using the trackball controls.js file for that, uh, a scene and a renderer. Now also in the past, we kind of just started writing our code right in here. We're actually going to create an initial uh, function, uh, which we'll run initially. So let's just say init. That will be the name of our function. We're calling it here. We'll create it in a moment. And then after that, we'll also create an animate function, which will run right here, right after the init function is run. And previously, we made an animate uh, function that animated the rotation of whatever object mesh we were working with. Uh, this time around, uh, it's actually going to be a simpler little part uh, because our trackball JS is going to actually be doing a lot of our animations. It's going to be using the uh, mouse to control the camera. Uh, so now that we have those called, let's start creating them. We'll say, if I could type today, function init. So uh, up here we're calling it, down here we're creating it doesn't matter if you call it before you create because JavaScript loads all into your RAM before running. Let's give it our curly braces here. And uh, first thing we're going to create here, let's create our camera. So we've, we've created the variable up above uh, within our main script, but here we're actually going to define what it is. So we'll say camera equals new three, all capital there. It is case sensitive. Uh, perspective camera and uh, so that's as we know we're just creating something new and from this little part here with the capital 3 we know that we are calling that from our 3JS uh, scripts up here so this one's going to be out of our main script um, let's remember to put our semicolon there now let's give it some parameters. We'll say 45 here, I think is what I've put in the past tutorials, somewhere around there. Uh, window inner width. So here we're defining the aspect ratio. So we have, we're saying 
make it the full width of the screen forward slash we'll say window dot inner height so we got our height and width it's going to be the full screen be sure to spell things properly like not throwing extra d's and mixing i and e's <laughs> um, and now we're going to say here one I think in the past I might have done 10 there, but we'll say 1,000. And that's what we can visualize uh, in depth, close and far away. Uh, and you'll see that actually in this tutorial where you didn't really see its, its, its um, uh, function in previous tutorials because our cubes, our objects were always in the same spot, which in this case the, the object's not going to move, but our camera's going to move away. And if you move far enough away, it will clip off the object. And that's what that's defining right there. Uh, so here we've created a camera by default it will go right to the center of our scene let's move it out or at least up a little bit we'll say camera dot position again spell things properly position dot z which is up and down and we'll say 500 here and now up above again we create controls let's define what those controls are so we'll say controls and it's real simple we're gonna say new controls so new and again three because we're gonna be calling from our uh, 3JS library which the trackball controls is part of and we're gonna say so from three find the trackball controls and what do we want the trackball script to control that library to control it will be our camera that we just created and defined um, so now that we have that Let's go ahead and every time something changes with that control, we want it to update and re-render uh, the scene. So here we're going to say uh, controls. So that same object we've already created, we're going to say add a an event listener. Again, if you've watched my old tutorials on uh, Pygame, you're familiar with event listeners. Basically, it's listening for events. Uh, really, any type of GUI interface uh, has event listeners. Um, QT or, or GTK. So hopefully if you've done some program before you're familiar with that. But basically we're saying here is, okay, we got our controls, which in this case is going to be mainly our mouse is going to be controlling the camera. And we're going to say, listen, this is an event listener. When something happens, an event happens, listen what event will when something changes. So when it changes what happens, we're going to run a function called render, which we will create momentarily. So, so far, uh, we've started creating one function, but we've called three functions. Init, the initial function, which is what we are creating here. Animate, which we'll create momentarily, and render, which we'll create momentarily. Um, so now that we have that, let's start creating our world, our scene. So we'll say scene equals new three dot scene again remember case sensitive here so capital s there capital three and again we know that we're saying three here it's going to be looking at something within uh, the libraries we got with three j s okay so now we've created our scene let's make some things to put in the scene uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a basic cube now in previous tutorials we said, you know, create a new uh, 3D, uh, 3JS mesh, and then we said, within that we said, three, it will be a new uh, three dot cube geometry, and then we gave it its, its parameters, which were its sizes, its height, width, and depth, and then we said comma, and we said uh, this type of material, and we said new 3JS, uh, either a mesh normal material, or a mesh Lambert material, or a mesh, uh, Fong material and uh, so hopefully you watch those tutorials and you know what I'm talking about instead of doing it all in one line we're gonna break it up into separate lines and you'll see why in future tutorials so although you can do it all in one line what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say var and we'll create uh, the geometry here so we're gonna have our you have three different things we have uh, what initially or uh, uh, finally we're gonna create our mesh well, the mesh needs some sort of geometry and the material. So let's create the geometry. And we can call this what we'd like. I'm gonna call it geometry. It's going to be a cube, but in future tutorials we might change that. So I'm just gonna give it a more generic name. That way I don't have to rename it every time we do a tutorial to keep things making sense. 
but we're going to say create an object geometry. What is that geometry? It's going to be a new 3JS and since we're creating a cube it will be a cube geometry and again case sensitive here. Um, and since it's a cube we need to give it a size we'll say 100 by 100 by 100. Don't forget our semicolon. Okay so next we have our geometry. We're also going to want a, me uh, a material to apply to the mesh when we create it and put the geometry in there. So we're going to say var and we're going to say material equals new three dot and we're just going to do a normal material uh, so we'll say mesh normal material okay so we've created our geometry and we created our material but now we have to take those and apply them to a mesh so we'll say variable and we'll just call it generic mesh again if it's on this side of the equal sign it's like this, 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 or this. These are, um, or this. These are names that we're giving it to describe what it is, but we can call them whatever we want. I'm going to call it mesh, once again, just to be a little ge generic here. Uh, we're going to say new, again, calling 3JS uh, script. But doing this, it's, it's basically the 3JS is taking care of all the heavy lifting for you. It's doing all the hard work. We just need to tell it exactly what we want to do, and it does it. And we're going to say that it's going to be a new 3JS mesh, which we've done previously. Now, as I said, in previous tutorials, basically inside our, well, we're passing this function here inside these parentheses, we passed it this and then comma this. We just separated it out to make it a little bit shorter on this line, but it allows us to, and as again, we'll go over this in future tutorials, um, we can apply different, the same material to multiple objects, and it saves us some typing because we just have to put material each time or whatever we call that material. Same with geometry. Again, we'll look at that more in future tutorials. So here we're going to say, instead of typing all this out, we're saying this, which equals that makes sense hopefully it does uh, we're not going to say a period there we're going to say a comma and we're going to say material so we've created a mesh that has a geometry and a material now it exists but basically in la la land it's in another dimension we can't see it it's another plane of existence until we take our scene and we add to it that mesh so we have our scene that we created up here and we're adding to it this mesh and anytime you create a new object whether it be a light or a mesh you have to add it to the scene before it is seen um, so now uh, we need to create our renderer uh, and again it, it we're putting this I think in previous tutorials I put it this kind of towards the top here I'm putting it towards the bottom as long as it's within this initial function so it will start rendering um, that's fine. We created it up here, but we didn't define what it is. So we're going to say renderer equals new, and we're going to say three dot web gl render. Whoops, render. -er. And now that we've created that renderer, we're going to say renderer and we'll set a size for our renderer. How big of a size do we want it to render? And we're going to want it to render, well, the window width and height. Uh, so it'd be the same as what we did for our camera here. I'm just going to copy and paste that. Uh, but instead of putting uh, the forward slash here, we're going to just put a comma in this particular case. But we're just saying make our renderer size the full screen, the inner width and height. Now, um, when we created our scene here, we didn't pass it a color of any sort. In the past, I think we passed it white. So by default, our background in this scene is going to be black because that's the default if you don't tell it anything else. And in this particular case, you'll notice a white border around our renderer. Um, and that's because, well, it's, it's, it's a, a element in the HTML and it has padding. You can get rid of that with CSS and we'll get into that in a future tutorial. I just wanted to mention that because you'll notice the white border around the black. You don't notice it 
when you have the white background uh, because, well, everything's white. So uh, here, and the border is actually around the body, which we are currently in, and we need to add our renderer to our body. So we're saying document. If you've done any type of uh, very, very basic uh, JavaScript, you're familiar with this. This is our HTML document. Within that, look at the body, which we're in, and we're going to say append a child to it. So we're adding an element. You can actually also create this with HTML tags inside the body or elsewhere with div tags or whatever, but we're going to just use it, do it using JavaScript. Um, and we're going to add our renderer that we just created as an element into the body tag. So we create our renderer, we set its size, and then we're saying put that inside the body tag. Okay, we're almost done. That is our initial function. That's the first thing that will run uh, when our page loads. Um, next thing that will run will be our animation function. So let's say function. We'll say animate. And we will say give it its curly braces. We'll say request animation frame. And we've gone over this in, in previous tutorial. Um, basically, it's, it's going to continually keep refreshing our screen here. So we got that, but we also want to take our controls object, which we created earlier, uh, controls, and we want to update them. So basically, uh, this function will run. When does this function run? Well, we've called it up here somewhere. Oh, that's right, we called it up here. So basically, this is constantly making sure our screen is staying animated and, um, and we're updating the controls from the mouse. Okay, so last function, a very short function, we're going to say function, let's go spell things right, function animate. Oh, I'm sorry, we just did that. Function render and we're gonna say renderer dot render where we're gonna render we're gonna render this scene and you can have more than one scene uh, and the camera view from a particular camera view you can have more than one camera and this is going to happen uh, basically in this particular case we call it right around here so, uh, as I said earlier, when there's an event, a change based on our controls, in this case, basically our mouse, when something changes, our mouse changes, it is going to run the render and re-render. Um, it doesn't have to render constantly, it just has to render whenever there's something changes. So that's it. If I typed everything right, our script should be done. Let's go ahead and save that. And... Um, I don't think I opened that up in a, red brow a web browser to start, so let's go here. I'm going to say Ice Weasel, which is like Firefox. <laughs> um, and you do want to make sure you, ha you know, I should have said this in the first tutorial, you want to make sure that you're using a browser that supports HTML5, WebGL, and all this 3D stuff. Firefox, Ice Weasel, Chrome is usually the most up-to-date. But we'll open up this file and... Uh, here it is, and we have nothing. And so I must have typed something wrong. Let's hit F12. I have Firebug installed um, in Firefox, but you can use the default Firefox, uh, uh, which I think you hit Control Shift K to bring up to check uh, the console for errors. And uh, I think in Chrome, it's F12 as well to bring up that console. I've clicked on console here. I'm gonna hit F5, refresh. Uh, oh, here we go. Tells me right here my problem when I'm setting um, the position of my camera. I put 500. We need to put that BZ equals 500. So once again, these little debugger consoles come in handy. I'm going to hit F5 there. Great. I'm going to close this console because everything seems to load fine. You notice this big white area? 
because we haven't set it to resize our camera and scene when something like that changes. That's something we're going to do in a future tutorial. I'm going to hit F5 again just to bring this up. So, once again, you notice the white border around it. That's just the padding on our body, which we can get rid of with, H, uh, with CSS, and we'll probably look at it in a future tutorial. Here's our cube. Our camera is looking at it direct on, uh, and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click and rotate like this. So you can see I am controlling this with my mouse. Now, it may look right here like I'm spinning the cube. I am not, and I want to make that clear. What we are controlling here is the camera, because if we had more objects in this scene, you would see them moving together because we're not really moving the cube or the other meshes, we're moving the camera, okay? So we're moving the camera just by left-clicking and dragging the mouse around. I can also scroll my mouse wheel to zoom in and out or I can center click, clicking down on the mouse wheel and drag in and out. Now you notice when we get far away, whoop, it gets clipped off. That is the clipping we put in the camera where we put from one to a thousand. Those are the distances that it will clip the cube away. So once it gets a thousand units away, it starts clipping it. So left click, drag, move the camera around. Scrolling or center clicking and dragging will zoom the camera in and out. And if you right click and drag, it does a pan. So you can pan around. And that is all possible thanks to 3JS's trackball controls.js. And as you can see here, um, under 50 lines of code to do that, uh, which is spectacular. Um, and this tutorial has been long enough. We're going to add to this more in future tutorials, but I want to say thank you for watching. I hope you watch all the videos in this series. There should be a annotation that brings you to a link that will be the uh, full playlist. Recommend watching all those. There will be a new video every Friday. If you get to a video in the playlist that you cannot access because it's marked private, it's because it hasn't been made public yet. There will be a new one next Friday. So keep up to date. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any. If you're enjoying these HTML5 uh, tutorials, especially these 3D ones, be sure to like this video so that I know that you guys are liking this topic. Um, and I hope you visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Be sure to check out the links in the description to my website, my IRC channel, and also links to this code. I again, recommend checking out um, uh, 3JS.org. Uh, that's T-H-R-E-E-J-S.org. Uh, that's where you can get this full library, and plenty of documentation and examples. Um, and that is all for today. I thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.